Hello, I'm Jonathan Dykes and like many of you I've spent most of my professional life in the language teaching industry. I started out as a teacher a long time ago but soon moved into language teaching management which is where I've been more or less ever since. Now today's subject is environmental sustainability and because it's such a serious subject I'm going to propose that we all do something serious about it. To summarise I'm going to invite you to join a new association of language schools that have achieved accreditation for the way they are safeguarding the environment. We call the schools in this association Green Standard Schools. And in this talk, I'm going to outline why I decided to set up this association and explain how it works. As this word cloud demonstrates, environmental sustainability is a complex issue with literally dozens of problem areas that all need solutions. But the key question for today is, what can the language teaching industry do to help solve some of these problems? Well, to begin with, I want to take you to Berlin way back in 2007. I was attending the ICEF workshop, which, as many of you know, has literally thousands of participants. I was there trying to promote the Spanish language courses we were offering in Barcelona and elsewhere, but I was feeling slightly frustrated by the fact that there were at least half a dozen other language schools selling similar courses in Barcelona at similar prices with similar accommodation options and so on. I spent the flight home thinking what could we do to stand out from the crowd. I also remember thinking that Berlin was way ahead of Barcelona in the way it encouraged its citizens to look after the environment. And then the penny dropped. What if we achieved accreditation as an environmentally friendly language school? Would that help us stand up from the crowd as well as limit the damage we were doing to our environment? So I started to investigate what organisations offered environmental accreditation and I came up with two. The first was ISO, which has a standard called ISO 14001, but I decided to go for the alternative, which was the European Union's Eco-Management and Audit Scheme, or EMAS for short. Now, obtaining EMAS accreditation proved to be a lot more challenging than I had anticipated, but we persevered and made it in the end. I subsequently gave presentations on our EMAS project at various international conferences, including an IH Directors Conference and an Equals Conference. I explained what EMAS was meant to do and how it worked. And I talked about the need to safeguard future generations using a rather cute photo of my daughter to make the point. And as director of the first private language school anywhere to achieve MS registration, I was even invited to give a talk at the European Parliament in Brussels doing an event called the World Green Design Forum. This was in 2013. Sadly, the impact of my pioneering leadership in environmental sustainability was negligible. Perhaps that's because the environment wasn't such a hot topic back then. Or perhaps it was because I wasn't entirely convinced of the EMMA system myself. But we plugged away and after five years we even received this bronze certificate in recognition of our dedication to the cause. However, as time went by, the costs of maintaining IH Barcelona on the EMMA's register became more of an issue. We had to employ a part-time environmental officer, we had to pay for two external audits each year and it became more and more apparent that the whole system was designed primarily for large manufacturing companies rather than smaller service companies like ours. It also bothered me that there was no public recognition of EMAS. Then, a couple of years ago, when environmental sustainability had started to become more of an issue, both in the media and in everyone's thoughts, I had what seemed to be a bright idea. Why not design an environmental accreditation scheme specifically for language schools? I understood the issues, I knew the industry, I knew what people might be able to afford, and having left my role as CEO of the IHLS group of schools, I had the time needed to work on it. 
I managed to persuade a number of colleagues to help me develop the idea and that work has led to this presentation of our new association which as you now know is called Green Standard Schools. Now one of the first things I should stress is that this is a not-for-profit association. I don't have an issue with for-profit organisations but this one is not designed to make its founders wealthy, it's designed to make a difference to environmental sustainability. End of story. I should perhaps explain who we are. On the statutes of our association there are four names. Mine, Joseph Sorbonne who runs IT Split and who I've worked with on a number of different projects. Yuri Granich, a software developer who has built an impressive school administration program called AMBA. And last but not least Paul McMullen who runs IH Belfast and has taken part in various sustainability projects in the past. We've also had a lot of help from this lady who is now going to introduce herself. Hello, my name is Marta Liliana Marin. I'm from Colombia, but I lived in the UK for four years while I was studying. I have a master's degree in sustainable development, which I took at the University of Sussex. In 2017, working alongside International House Belfast and the Studio Abroad Agents ESL, I was given the opportunity to bring to life a sustainability app that I have created for increasing CSR levels of languages schools. Paul McMillan, the director of IH Belfast, then introduced me to Jonathan, and he recruited me to work with him on the development of his Green Standard Schools project. Jonathan had a clear idea of what he wanted to achieve, but he needed some input from someone with my background to ensure that the accreditation process will cover all the environmental issues that language schools can and should be responding to. I also helped design the association self-assessment application form, and the idea here was to ensure that it was rigorous, but not so demanding that schools would be put off from applying. The association is now up and running, and I honestly think we did a, a pretty good job. Environmental sustainability is such an important issue. We have to take every opportunity to explain what's happening, limit the damage we are all doing, and suggest ways to restore the damage we already done. Language schools work with millions of students for, from all over the world every year. So it makes perfect sense to engage with all these people and try to pursue them of the need to act now, before the situation gets any worse. We really can make a difference. Not just in the way we operate our schools, but also in the way our students and staff perceive environmental sustainability. I'm very pleased to have been able to help Jonathan and his partners get this association started. And I look forward to working with those of you who choose to join Green Standard Schools in the future. Thank you for listening and good luck. The aims of our association can be summarised as follows. Firstly, we want to lessen the impact that language teaching has on the environment by developing a set of policies and practices that language teaching institutions can adopt and adhere to. Secondly, we're going to award accreditation against these policies and practices to providers of language education anywhere. And thirdly, we're also going to develop resources designed to encourage environmental sustainability in language teaching and learning. So, how does it work? Well, we're in the process of finalising our website. Here's a screenshot of how it currently looks and the website includes information on how to become a member. A school first has to register its interest and then the next step is to complete an application form. This application form is divided into two sections. The first section asks for standard data about the school, its size, range of courses offered, that sort of thing. The second section focuses on the school's current environmental practices. This second section consists of a series of 48 yes-no questions that cover a wide range of environmental areas as you can see listed here on the slide. 
Let's look at a few of the questions from the first topic, energy, in more detail. So the first question in this section is, do you monitor and record the amount of energy you use in your school? If you answer yes, you then have to demonstrate how you do this. Your evidence could be a simple Excel file listing your energy bills and adding up the number of kilowatts you use each year. The second question is, have you undertaken to reduce your total energy consumption each year? Again, if you answer yes, you're asked to provide evidence of this commitment. You don't have to aim to slash your consumption. A reduction of 3 or 4% each year is reasonable. The important thing is to have a target. Question 3 is about the school's electricity provider. Do they guarantee to generate some of their energy from renewable sources? If so, what percentage? Each question on the application form generates a score, and as you can see from this next slide, the energy section has a maximum number of 22 points available. The total number of points available in the application form is 200, and we've decided that schools need to obtain at least 130 points, which is a score of 65%, in order to be eligible for accreditation. Here are a few other points about the accreditation process. The first point is that the application forms will be checked by an assessor, someone like Martha, who we met earlier, who is qualified to determine whether or not the evidence the school has provided is sufficient. The next point is that the forms will need to be updated annually to ensure that any changes to a school's environmental sustainability practices are registered. The third point is that we may introduce spot checks but we don't want people flying around the world generating carbon emissions, so we need to find and train local people who can visit schools in their area. And the final point is that yes, there will be a modest fee for accreditation, which will vary according to the size of the school. Here's the fee system we have planned for 2021. As you can see, we're not planning to charge a fortune, but we have to have some income. And if you ask where the money will go, well, there are three main areas. The first is our assessors. They are all experts in environmental sustainability, but we need to sustain them as well. Secondly, publicity. We want the world to know about Green Standard Schools so that our members receive the recognition and credit they deserve. And thirdly, standard business administration expenses. We shouldn't have too many of these, but some are unavoidable. And if there is any spare cash at the end of the year, we'll gladly donate some of it to an environmental project nominated by our members. So let's summarise the benefits of accreditation to schools. Well, first and foremost, green standard schools will be making a serious and verifiable contribution to environmental sustainability. That should be motivating enough, but there are several other benefits. Accreditation should also provide schools with a powerful new marketing tool. If someone from Spain is thinking of taking an English language course in the UK, for example, they may be persuaded to choose one school over another if one of the schools on their shortlist has environmental accreditation and the others don't. Similarly, it may be easier for schools to recruit and retain key staff members if they're able to demonstrate their environmental credentials. Schools may also benefit from uh, appreciation from the wider community in the sense that local partners may applaud schools for their green credentials and be inclined to treat them more favourably. And as we've seen, green standard schools will also have access to a range of digital teaching resources specifically designed to help them integrate in environmental issues into their classes, all available via a tailor-made platform. And they'll also have access to our assessors and a forum of their peers. So it should all add up to a major boost to a school's image and sustainable business development. Once accredited, schools will be able to use this logo on their website. Uh, and they'll also receive a certificate which they can hang in their reception area. And uh, I'm now going to play a short video that explains what I've been saying. Our world is facing environmental disaster. The climate is changing. Our rivers and seas are full of plastic. Our forests are disappearing. 
Both species are going extinct at a terrifying rate. Even the air we breathe is contaminated. We know we have to act fast if we are going to save the world from disaster. And we know that education is the key. That means all education, including language teaching. It is time to take environmental sustainability seriously, which means committing to a range of sustainable policies and practices. If you are ready to make such a commitment, your language school should receive recognition or credit. You should be accredited as a school that upholds green standards. You should become a green standard school. You can become a green standard school by joining our nonprofit association. To become a member, you have to tell us what you are doing to protect the environment and commit to doing more. You have to include environmental issues in your classes. You have to make sure that everything you do and say helps spread the message that the world is too precious to be treated as an expendable resource, to be exploited and polluted. You have to become an ambassador for environmental sustainability. It's not quick or easy, but it's worth all the effort. The language teaching industry can help show the way to a brighter, greener future. Will you join us? So like most associations, the more members we have, the more powerful our voice will be. So please have a look at our website and think about getting on board. The costs are relatively small and the benefits both for schools and for the environment should be significant. That's it. Thank you for listening.